So we've all heard of double data rate memory, DDR4, DDR3, DDR2, I got a pair of DDR4 modules right here. And that's just it. There are a pair of modules that are intended to work together. Obviously you cannot get a DDR4 module to work in tandem with a DDR3 module or a DDR2 module. That's, that's not how this works. But what about mixing different modules within the same generation of memory? So for example, if I want to use one Corsair module and let's say one team group module, is this possible? And if so, what are the limitations associated with it? Obviously, it looks a bit weird, but is that really the only trade-off? What about pairing a, a very, you know, slow, latent module with something that's super fast, like a Corsair Dominator module? Let's see how this works as well. You can't even tell that there's a smaller module behind it. These are so huge. But uh, yeah, what are, what are the side effects of running modules like this, assuming you can? We're gonna talk about all of that and more in this video. If you're upset about that inconsiderate Windows activation watermark plaguing your screen, snag an OEM license. SCD key makes it simple. You have one in a few seconds for a little over $10, then click here, 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 and then here, paste your activation key, and you can kiss that watermark goodbye. And be sure to use my new offer code GSL for a 12% discount on your order. So let's cut straight to the point. Is there anything inherently wrong with mixing different DDR4 modules from different brands? Maybe the chips themselves are different different. In short, no. You could get all four of these modules to run in the same system without any hitches at all. You will, however, run into some potential incompatibilities or issues with different memory frequencies and timings. Consider this Corsair Dominator module. It is certainly flashy, a very ostentatious module. I love Corsair Dom Platts specifically, and uh, these blacked out modules look very good as well. But would it make sense to pair this with something like this, which is a very cheap DDR4 module I ripped out of a Dell Alienware PC? I mean, let's be honest, you could just look at these two and tell that they aren't intended to run together. This is a super slow module by comparison. 2133 megahertz, that's the base frequency for DDR4, and cast latency's timings subpar. In this case, very tight timings, that's good, that's what you want. You want timings that are lower, they, they reflect latency, memory latency overall, and then you want something that runs pretty fast, a high frequency. This is 3200 megahertz, it's great. Running these two together would mean you'd have to compromise on the Corsair DOM speed. That's a problem if you're gonna pay more for the speed up front because if you pair it with this, you're not gonna be able to utilize the extra speed that you paid for. If for whatever reason you want to run both of these modules in your next system, you will have to mind the lowest common denominator. What I mean by that is the slower module will dictate the speed of the memory in the system. You can't have two different modules running at two different speeds with two different sets of timings, whether they be in the same channel or in different channels. And that means, like I said earlier, you'll be crippling the performance of your faster module to accommodate for the slower partner. By the way, if you're concerned about dual channel support, which is a question I imagine many Ryzen users especially would want to ask. Uh, the answer to that is you will have support for dual channel memory even if you mix up modules, which is good. Again though, the compromise will be uh, using the lowest common denominator as your frequency and, and timing baseline. So uh, as long as you put the modules in the optimal slots, typically it's slot one and slot three or slot two and slot four for dual channel, uh, you'll have channel A1 and A2 next to each other and then B1, B2, uh, then you should have dual channel enabled without a problem. So mixing modules in that case shouldn't affect anything. Another question asked quite a bit is whether or not you can mix different sized DDR4 or DDR3 modules uh, in the same system. So if this was an eight gig module and this POS right here was a four gig module, could you still mix those? And assuming you're again willing to compromise on the faster frequency and timings, the answer is still yes. Your system will see all 12 gigs of RAM. I wanna stress though, that when you start mixing so many different variables, you could potentially run into memory and compatibility issues. There are reports of people running mixed memory modules and getting BSODs every now and then related to memory. It's, it's kind of a hit or miss thing. Uh, obviously, I recommend running identical pairs of modules uh, or sets of four if that's your vibe, uh, but uh, if you if you if you must, I guess I should say, mix modules, uh, then try to get everything as as close as possible, uh, so as to limit the number of issues like that. In fact, in one of my recent laptop videos, 
I ended up opting for 20 gigs of DDR4 in total, mixed modules, mixed speeds, uh, so actually, yeah, 20 gigs is super weird. That's a super weird number for DDR4. Typically it's in like increments of two or four, right? So uh, it'd be two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. I have 20 in my Dell and that's because I'm running a 16 gig module with a four gig module. The four gig module is obviously smaller in, in capacity. Uh, it is also slower and the timings are higher. So it's really dragging down the 16 gig module. It's a team group, uh, I forget what model it is, but that's a team group module. It's a pretty nice module. I was hoping to run the pair uh, so that I could have 32 gigs in total, but I'm still willing to mix up the module so that I could have higher uh, a higher RAM capacity overall, which is great for video editing and a sort. It's way better than eight gigs, which is what the laptop came with stock. So more on that in this video here if you wanna check it out. But uh, I will say I'm currently running mixed RAM in one of my frequently used devices and I haven't had any issues to date. I'm not trying to scare you. I just wanna let you know that there is a possibility of a BSOD every now and then related to memory. And uh, yeah, that, that's why obviously the optimal thing to do would be to mix identical modules. And so we've come full circle. Should you mix modules? In short, no, you really shouldn't, but can you? You absolutely can, as long as we're talking about, again, the same generation of memory, in this case, DDR4, the most recent uh, generation for desktop platforms like this. I will say that uh, as someone who's used mixed module systems before, you're probably not gonna notice a difference unless you're using very sensitive platforms. Ryzen tends to be a bit more sensitive with memory than Intel. Uh, Intel also has, again, we showed uh, uh, briefly in the video, flex mode, uh, which will enable dual channel for even mixed capacity modules, uh, at least up to the minimum capacity of one DIMM, uh, which is nice. AMD doesn't really come out and say this, although it has been reported that it works. With AMD though, strictly speaking, I would stick to, to actual kits that are meant to work together, especially AMD. Intel, you can probably be a bit uh, looser with those terms and get by with a bit more. That's just because of the nature of Intel's architecture when compared to that of Ryzen's and the Infinity Fabric. With that, if you guys like this video, like the advice in it, give this one a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Subscribe, become a Floatplane member. You guys can join our public Discord server. I would appreciate that as well. And uh, yeah, leave a comment down below. Let's chat it up down there. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.